welcome back guys let's do a quick update on the markets and everything going on first of all not financial advice consult your licensed financial advisor i'm not a licensed financial advisor I'm not always right i am sometimes wrong that's how it is that's what investing is uh let's, we're gonna cover the news first and then i'll uh look at price action and the charts so um Let's look at this article. Well, first of all, inflation and socialism light are just what the billionaires want. Uh, I'm going to read that. Let's just scroll through real quick. Yeah, big tech firms, all of them, not just, you know, TikTok and all that. If you read that headline, you guys know what I mean. I just can't say it. Uh, you know, I bought a truck. I murdered it out. It's all blacked out. It looks like a death machine going down the road. Um, you know, off-roading tires, everything, just tinted, fog lights, the whole nine. Uh, you got to get prepared, guys. <laughs> For You never know what's going to happen. Like um being able to haul things uh being high off the ground helps for off-roading <laughs> whatever comes our way hope for the best um prepare for the worst this is funny uh 108 billion bridgewater set up 50 tent offices in the woods outside of his outside of its headquarters for its traders all right, so what I'm assuming is happening here, I'm not going to read the article, is he's probably trying to get out of the market. The problem is Bridgewater is so big. I mean, when your your fund is like, I don't know what it is, but it's probably a significant size of the entire market. So to offload slowly and gradually, to scale, you have to scale out of out of the position if you don't what you're gonna get is um slippage so if bridgewater you know sold a trillion dollars worth of stock instantly the market would just drop to like zero because there's no buying support there's not enough buyers there to sell into so you'll get huge slippage <laughs> So he set up tents, like tent cities outside of his headquarters, probably a bunch of traders. It's kind of like a fire sale. If you guys ever watch that movie Margin Call, good movie. Um, and, this, and this is what happened, right? And in the big short as well. It's called a fire sale. You get, your, you get everyone and you're like, listen, here's your percentage of bonus. The bigger the bonus you get, if the more you could sell without the most amount of slippage when you're selling into the market because i have a feeling i'm not saying this is what they're doing but this is my speculation and theory they're getting out of the market is the problem is they have so much capital they they have to have like thousands of traders intent intense <laughs> uh slowly selling off into the market that's what I'm assuming is happening, guys. So if that's not the canary in the coal mine, I don't know what is. And obviously he knows something that everyone or... Well, I know, but what most of the market doesn't know. And, you know, I'm sure he has way more insider uh, knowledge. Like, way better than Bloomberg terminals and you name it. WTI holds its gains... Amid surprise crude build, large gasoline draw. My speculation is smart money knows that the price of crude is going to go up in the next years to come. So there is bidding out there for crude. In anticipation, front running what's going to come. I'll talk about the charts. We'll look at the price. I do not, you know, crude's going to sell off with the market, but I don't think it's going to sell off as bad as uh it did in like march right and a uh, wave two of the cold i don't know they're pushing for it maybe in europe 
But in the U.S., I, I don't think they're going to be able to pull it off. Um, it should be over with by now. I Again, the masses... I don't want to get into talking about it, but a new article came out. I posted it in the newsroom last night. They're, uh, they're uh, backpedaling like a lot of things. Like this might not even be airborne at this point. We don't know. Uh, of course, you know, they're canceling. Uh, I don't want to get into it. You guys could go to the website and read these. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Was Monday's big sell-off a plea for more stimulus? VI shift gold. Yes, it was, my opinion. Um, Schiff, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys watch his videos as well. He's a, he's probably the best financial economist, although his timing is never right. Okay. Um, but his long-term view is aligned with mine, right? But yeah, uh, the market needs more stimulus. It always will need more stimulus, no matter what. Why is that? Because it's dependent on, it's a bubble, and exponential stimulus i'm talking previous stimulus like they can't do like let's say five trillion every year or something like that right i'm just throwing out numbers as an example it has to be exponential so if this year it was five trillion next year it has to be 10 the year after that has to be 15 the year after that has to be like 30 that's how you that's how Ponzi's work and that's how a debt driven plus interest that's how it has to happen because it's all debt and um, maybe not quite to that level of a, a multiple but every year it kind of has to be more because as soon as they pull it away, the market's going to start falling and everything starts falling and the debts come due. And then the tre and no one's buying the treasuries. So <laughs> that's why the case for hyperinflation, not out of the realm of impossibilities, it might actually be a certainty. If anything, it'll just be high running inflation. I just went grocery shopping again today. And... Like 150 bucks will feed me for like a week. That's insane. That's not right. I mean, eventually people are going to notice it. I, I don't know when. I don't know when. And you know, I look around. I pay attention to my surroundings. I'm usually... I usually have the most food in my cart. Um... And I don't even have a family. I have a dog, you know. And uh, even that is pricey. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it at that. So yeah, Monday the market did fall. And it's be because they keep stalling on the stimulus, right? And they're probably going to push the, the stalling and the infighting is going to happen till election if not after, right? Because we don't know how crazy it's going to be. It could be completely Banana Republic style stuff that we're going to see. Especially with what's going on with, you know, um, the Supreme Court and uh, Orange Man. Uh, he said Saturday he's going to announce they're pushing it through. They're going to try to get it through. Which is a good thing for our freedoms, if anything. Uh, yeah, so 138 billion Bridgewater set up 50, 10 offices, but they're still down 18%, 18.6% year to date in performance. They're down 18%. That's pretty bad. <laughs> and, you know, he made up his all weather portfolio. And, and you know what? He is one of the reasons why the market is so, so bubbly. It's because of his cookie cutter uh, all weather portfolio and his manufacturing of giant index funds like Bridgewater, right? 
So everyone's retirement just goes into a giant basket cookie cutter. And then everyone holds a ton of FANG stocks and it just keeps going up. Meanwhile, he's probably offloading onto his own clients or who knows. I'm not saying that he is. I'm just saying, why would he set up um, tents for traders if they're not offloading? I don't know what they're doing, but um, very, very suspicious. All right, let's, um, so in the newsroom, I said the market's going to be green probably Monday and Tuesday because normally um, when the market does sell off for a week, it's usually bullish the first two days going into Wednesday and then starts selling off Wednesday afternoon into Friday. But this time it didn't do that. The market just sold off Monday. Today it kind of bounced. Today's Tuesday, by the way. It's the 22nd, um, September. So let's take a look at the futures. Right now it's 9 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. I mean, it's mixed. It's very mixed. Gold actually fell below uh, 1900 for a second for like a day. I'll talk about gold. Let's get into the charts. Here's a macro look at the S&P 500. It goes all the way back to 1971 back here. This is where we are currently. So you can get that big macro sense of idea of where the market is. Um, looks good for a good correction, good size correction. As I've been warning for like a while now and now we're finally seeing it, right? And I'm not like, I wasn't calling it too, I did call it too early because I was like two months early, <laughs> which is pretty bad in the trading world, but I am a swing trader. I called it too early, a little too early, but in the end, I'm still right here for swing trading. All right, here's S&P monthly chart. Listen, next big support is around pretty much 3,000 on the S&P 500. And that's my target, immediate target. And then we'll see if uh, we, we get a bid. By then, it'll be like late October, right? Um, so we'll see if the market could sell off until late October on the monthly because by then we're looking at not only is there support from the price action here a lot of touches around this area but uh the 50 I guess is going to act as support if we take it to um the weekly the 50 week moving average is slightly above 3,000. The 100 week moving average is around 3,000. But honestly, if we just look at the daily, my blue line is around is literally around 3,000 on the daily. So that'll be perfect. It'll it needs to fill this gap, right? And he needs to retest this support, which used to be major resistance. And it's just a perfect round number. TA wise, perfect retest around 3,000. Perfect size correction. It really is. And it's a perfect size correction, to, which would actually be bullish going into 2021. And that's just that, you know, the Fed's going to come out. And they're going to promise more stimulus in 2021 and they'll put a stop to it. They're not going to let it fall below 3000 and maybe it'll just trade sideways for a while. I don't know. We'll see when we get there, but I do not expect the market to fall below 3000 because I, I know they're going to just, they're going to do something right. So 
and the fact that the dollar right now is bouncing like I said it would it give, it's going to give them more room to print more and they're just not going to let it go below 3000 but right now I mean we're 300 points away from 3000 so on the S&P 500 so it's it's very very normal if it were to do that versus previous historical price action to retest this okay plus the 200 day moving average is down there my blue line my my blue equilibrium line it it is it was just set up perfectly for uh 2021 and possibly you know but um of course we're going to monitor economic data and everything going into the election and afterwards and how crazy that's going to get now if things get really crazy in the next um six weeks which they might matter of fact they will probably and after um uh you know the election then you could see then we might look for a deeper correction which would be on the weekly Then it would be pretty crazy. I mean, I don't know. If you're you're looking at support at again at 2800 and then somewhere around 2600. 2600 would be the worst case scenario. But for now, for the intermediate shorter term, next six weeks, I'm looking at 3000 as target area. Targets are never hit, but target area. There's Apple, really overvalued. This is just a four hour chart. Let's just take it to a weekly real quick. It's not a weekly. By the way, perfect shooting star on the monthly. Uh, that candlestick, that huge wick up here, huge reversal, huge reversal sign. And because it's so heavily weighted, cap wise apple is in everyone's retirement portfolio um the way apple goes in these fangs the way the rest of the market goes i mean just a retest of 80 bucks would would definitely be normal would bring it back to somewhat not parabolic super overvalued right all right um what else all right so the vix listen the vix guys the reason that thing doesn't do much and then all of a sudden explodes in price action and then sells off really quickly is because it's heavily heavily manipulated by the powers to be that's my theory um and it's a little bit delayed like the market has to be selling off like 500 points to a thousand like day after day fear has to grip uh the human psyche and then all of a sudden the damn thing like pops and does a 10x and with holding the vix in my opinion not financial advice if you're gonna do options you got to put them out uh, i mean it's hard I hold it, I do both, but I hold it and then when it pops, it pops and then I take, I'll hold it for a little bit, not too long, like a few days a week or at the most a couple weeks or something and then I'll, I'll, I'll scale out of it. Like the last time the VIX popped in March, right, it popped and it went up one, two, three, four, four weeks. You had four weeks to five weeks to sell, but four weeks. And this thing went up. And I caught this, by the way. It was one of my great uh, trades in March. Hedged my entire portfolio. Yeah, it went up 5x, 500% pretty much. But you had four weeks to hold and get out. So I'm looking for something like that again uh, soon. It might not be 500x or not 500, 5x, but something, all right? 
at least to 50 bucks right now. So that will give you like a 1x. Which is pretty good for, uh, you know, if you throw on a call. But don't do that if you don't have like 7 years experience and all that. You just buy it, hold it, put on a, sm a small position, right? You never trade over 1% or especially 3% of your total uh, account worth. That's how pros do it. All right. Um, Euro versus USD. Oh, let me go back. I didn't finish. Let's look at the dollar and then treasury yields. Let me get a drink. All right, here's a dollar. So it popped right back up in my range. It looked like it was just going to sell off. And I told you guys, you know what? Um, they're not going to let it fall that easily. And I told you, as soon as the equities market starts selling off, it's going to put a bottom in the dollar or the Dixie, the DXY, and they'll give you a nice rebound. And I've been calling it, right? And it's finally starting to happen. It could, it could get back up around 98 handle. I don't think it's going to get above it. And it could get back up above. I mean, the 200-week moving average is going to act as resistance. But if it could break through that, as you can see right here, which would be somewhere around 95 handle, 95.5, if you get above that, then it, it'll run back up to like 98 and then probably uh, start selling off again. And what this is going to do, it'll put a little bit of pressure on gold and silver some more. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like putting another, um, it's like the Fed being able to chamber another round. Uh, so for their next round of stimulus, which will probably come after the election. So I'm thinking up until then, the market will continue its correction, which is actually normal and healthy and fine. That should happen. Let's look at treasuries real quick. Also, with the dollar strengthening a little bit again, it's going to help for holiday sales for Christmas. For exports, uh, well, the U.S. is going to go net negative into trade deficit, but we will be able to buy more crap for the holidays, like for gifts. Um, yeah, yields falling still. It's at 0.66. I feel like it's just permanently suppressed yield curve control. And I think it's just going to kind of go sideways. Might hit um 60, but I don't think it's going to go below that. And then the market's going to correct. And uh, there you go. Here's the euro versus the dollar. Now, here was my range, right? Where's my writing on this? It's weird. Well, the range is in here between these two purple lines. And it's fallen back into the range. This was basically a false breakout. And I told you guys I was pretty sure it was going to be a false breakout because I was expecting the dollar to bounce as soon as the market sold off, right? So that's pretty much what happened. And now it's falling back into the range. And the euro is going to get weaker versus the dollar probably for a while. Maybe maybe until like spring or summer of next year to 2021. Here's the Dow Transports. I think it's hit up. Pretty much it's peaked out. And uh, it's going to fall back down which will actually put a lot of um weakness into the economy and the markets so 
the Fed has a real uphill battle to fight here. With uh, They're going to have to pump a lot of stimulus going into 2021. And I don't know how they're even going to justify it because they can't do any more lockdowns because of this cold, right? Because no one's going to put up with it. I'm, you know, I sometimes I, I, I've lost faith in people because they're all wearing the, the, the masks and then... But at some point, I mean, I don't know. People are going to, like, they can't keep doing this. I mean, it'll put out, it'll put the rest of the small businesses out of business. And, I mean, the problem is, is that they're printing and they're sending out checks. But 1300 bucks or 1200 or whatever it is, that doesn't buy you a lot. Not in the U.S., not anymore. That's per person. So families actually get a lot more. They get like five grand, but it really doesn't go far. And people are still blowing it on stupid things. They're just putting down payments on cars that they can't afford. I don't know, guys. Uh, E-mini light crude oil futures. Uh, maybe a little bit of downside but not much the worst I'm thinking like 36 bucks uh, here's here's the US dollar versus WTI crude uh, with a chart actually why did I have two charts hold on All right. Um, market sells off. There is less um, economic flow overall going around in the West, at least. In the East, I feel like things have gone back to normal. It's not in the media because I don't want you to know this. Um, but. Um, that's not why oil and energy prices are going to go up. It's yes, demand is fall has fallen and it's probably not going to get back to 2019 levels. But all the stimulus is just going to make the value of the energy go up versus your paper currency. Also, we might see this is Schiff, all right? This is where I'm getting it from. Schiff says a lot of these oil producers are going to go bust and they probably will so then there's going to be less supply put on the market and then there will be a supply shortage and then the prices are going to go up but you know this is still going to take months and years to play out but for the short term for the next like six months i still think um Maybe oil price won't go up quickly, but steadily and slowly for the next year or so. Um, here's NASDAQ E-mini on the left here. In the center is S&P. On the right here is the FANG index. Here's the Dow. Here's the Russell 2000. Here's the Vanguard Global. They're all above their 100 day. Most of them are still above, except for the S&P 500. Most of them are still above their 50 day moving averages. So to retest the 200 day moving average on the weekly would be normal and would be a perfect correction for the U.S. equity markets and global. What else? Here's the FANG on the left. NASDAQ composite on the right. The two that are the most overvalued and they're the most bubbly. They, they still have a long way to correct. 
what I mean by correction is not a crash. I'm just saying correction. So a retest of the 100-day or 200-day moving average is not out of the question. I do not think they will let it fall to the 200-day moving average. I do think the Fed's going to step in. I just don't know what, how volatile and how crazy things are going to get because of um, the political... Uh, the political banana republic style stuff that's going on in the U.S., right? So a healthy normal correction, well, for the for the FANG index would probably still take you near the 200-day, 200, 200, yeah, well, oh, wait, hold on. These are daily charts. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm not, I, I was thinking these were weekly. These are daily charts. Okay, on the daily charts, the daily time frame, yes, a retest of the 200-day moving average would be completely normal and very healthy. Will the Fed step in prior to the 200-day moving average? I don't know. It all depends on the broader indexes, how far they're falling. I'm assuming if, um, but these two, they would probably step in at the 100-day moving average to put in a bid. Unless, like I said, it gets really, really wild and hectic, then, um, like, we don't know who won, basically. Then, uh, yeah, these two could correct easily to the 200-day moving average. If not, my blue equilibrium line. So, in that case, having a hedge on your portfolio, especially if, a lot, if you're holding a lot of... Uh, I mean, if you're holding anything, you should have a hedge. And you could have a hedge by... Uh, shorting the market with an inverse ETF versus outright shorting. And then um, your hedge should save you from uh, the, doubt, the, the drawdown. And if you're leveraged up, it'll save you from getting a margin call and blowing up your account. So I just personally have a feeling something big is coming soon. And Ray Dalio has tents outside his headquarters with traders. <laughs> and there's a lot on the line in the U.S. There just is, if you haven't been paying attention. Here's the Russell 2000 weekly chart. At least, at least a retest of 23.6 Fib retracement, which would take you to 1400. That's what I'm looking at. There is support there and Fib retracement. My blue line's there. And, you know, it's already broken. We have a death cross right here, too, with the 100-day and the 200-day moving averages. Here's Platinum. There's some support on platinum at 800 bucks. I think I'm going to start uh dipping my toes into some platinum stocks uh or once it hits like 800, you know, anything under. I I'm not going to put a lot into it. I just think that um it's very undervalued for a like its last the peak of its last bull market was back in uh 2008 so on a macro cyclical you know fractal it's probably going to go back up in the next five ten years for for one reason or another for monetary value for uh lack of supply whatever you know i'm not going to buy a lot just you know although it is a great way to like carry your wealth <laughs> like just a little brick like just a little brick would be a very very valuable 
but it's cheaper than gold, so. But of course, it, you know, you, you could put, store a lot of value in it, but the time is to do it when the prices are low. That is now. So if I were to buy some physical, which I, I don't have any, but um, if I did, right, I'd hold it for like five, ten years and then, you know, sell it. So I'll try to time it best as my best as humanly possible. But the, the risk with platinum is when it falls, it's going to fall quickly. So and I don't know how easy it is to get rid of it. That's why I'm not going to do any physical. Um, here's Tesla. This is a weekly chart of Tesla. It's still up there in the stratosphere. Just saying. I think it's overvalued. It's my own opinion. It's all your licensed financial advisor. But I'm keeping my eyes on it. Um, by the way, they weren't uh, introduced in the S&P 500. Apparently their batteries, he missed another due date or whatever. Okay, here's oil versus gold features. I don't really want to talk about that. All right, here's gold on the left. There's silver on the right. Let's look at gold and we'll look at silver then afterwards. All right, this is a monthly chart of gold. Monthly, every candlestick's a month. Right now, I have a nine cell signal. It's perfect. It's already falling. It started falling sooner on the eight, but I caught that with the daily and the weekly. If you guys remember, I told you. Um, I sold two months ago my leverage ETFs, and I took huge, massive profits on them. If you would have listened to me, did great. If you would have listened to me on a lot of things, you would have done really great. All right. Um, yeah, so possibly, you know, four more, three to four more months of downside. Maybe just two. We'll see. Could be sh shorter because it all depends on what the Fed does. Let's take it to, uh, but listen, I mean, this is a little uh, over um, extended, right? I don't think the correction and dip is going to be all that bad. 1700 1750 I think will be the extent of it in my opinion let's go to a weekly real quick yeah I mean there is support at 17 1750 area let's take a look at silver Which is awesome, so we could load back up on these mining stocks and ETFs, right? Uh, this is a monthly chart of silver. It's at 24 right now. It topped out at 30 bucks. Um, can they can it fall with the rest of the broader equity markets because of margin calls? Same with gold. Can it fall back down to twenty bucks or below? Uh, maybe. I think it'll fall to twenty, and then I don't know if it'll fall below it again. If it does, it'll be very very short lived in my opinion. But it might find a. It might find it some support in the nice bottom at 20 bucks. I mean, the 100 month moving aver average is at $21. <coughs> Let's take a look at the weekly. Well,. Listen, I mean, we're looking at support at around pretty much 20, 20 
$8.80. And then all the way to 18 it's not going to fall. I, there's no way it'll, even if it goes below 20 I don't think it'll go below 18 Even if they're smashing it and whatever. So, but I do, I am looking for it to test 20 bucks again. And then I'm a buyer at 21 an ounce, and then anything below it. Just scaling in, scaling in, scaling in, and then buying more silver mining stocks. That's what I'm going to do, personally. So, uh, this would load. Okay, here's S&P 500. Um, why do I not have? Old ratio. That is weird. I just lost a few things on my chart. Let's take a look at this. No, I don't want to give away any ETFs, um, and I'm not going to re record this or edit it. So let's do this. I'll add GDX. GDX is um, the large. It's an ETF comprised of the large. Uh, the large mining companies, right? The largest ones. I'm not saying to buy it or anything. I'm just saying um, this is the way to track the mining sector, right? It's just to get an idea of where the mining... Um... Okay, well, you guys can see it. You know, it's this blue line right here. Okay, so when the S&P 500 is going to correct, right? Falls to, well, it's not going to fall that much. This is hard to see. Oh, you guys can listen. Listen, it doesn't matter. S&P falls and corrects. Has a healthy correction to 3,000. Or it's a deeper correction, right? Maybe to like 2,600. The more it corrects and the faster it corrects, margin calls are going to happen and your mining stocks are going to continue to sell off especially the ETFs, which is awesome because it buys, it gives us another huge, huge one in a lifetime opportunity to load back up again, right? And then we're going to ride it right back up like we did. Um, well, at least this is what I'm doing. Like I did uh, earlier this summer, right? We saw a bunch of 5X, 2X, a few 10X, uh, my, uh, gains on individual mining stocks and some of these ETFs did really really well especially if you put some call options on them if you bought them especially at that March low when I was begging everyone I'm like listen this is probably the greatest opportunity ever so you did really well right two months ago two and a half months ago whenever that was I said I'm getting out of the leverage ETFs and I'm selling some of the mining stocks I took profits I've been sitting on cash, I've been short the market, and now I'm looking for the next buying opportunity. And I think it's coming right now in the next, right now I'm not buying back in yet. I'm going to wait a few more weeks and maybe a month or two. We'll see what happens, right? Things get crazy, if you know what I mean. So, there you go. These are my thoughts and opinions. Could be wrong. Consult your licensed financial advisor before you do anything. Have stops in place, motions up. All right, guys, smash them likes.
Put in the comment section what you want me to talk about. Um, share my videos, only way my channel grows. Uh, what else? Go to my website if you want to be in the private group. Oh yeah, there's like a bunch of people. It's really weird. There's like five people who signed up. Then they joined the Patreon to join the private group. The Patreon's not the private group. That's just for payments. You're supposed to follow directions. It's very simple. It takes like two minutes. So go on the Patreon, message me what I asked for, and then I will give you the links for the private groups. And people just can't follow simple directions. And you know what? If you can't follow those directions, then probably shouldn't be in the private group anyways. And uh, yeah, so um, I have two YouTube channels, by the way. Actually, I have three. It's very easy to find. If you look at my main channel, whatever you're look, whatever channel you're on right now, go to the other channel. The one channel has over eight thousand. The other has like sixteen hundred. The other one has like a couple hundred. And then I'm on other platforms as well. Um, just in case you never know. I I'm not making as many videos right now because I'm researching like over two hundred mining stocks for this dip buying opportunity. For the private group members, I'm going to start uh, uploading some spreadsheets. Uh, what else? Later, you know, in the winter, I'm more active because I'm not outside doing stuff and preparing for then. Um, <laughs> uh, I will do more tutorial videos and stuff like that. But um, put in the comment section what you want me to cover and talk about. I'm not going to get too conspiratorial. I have to be careful what I say because everyone's just getting, all, their, all the channels are getting nuked. It's unreal. It's unbelievable. This is the world we live in, and this is the world we all deserve for doing nothing. All right, guys. Uh, well, I'm doing something. I'm trying, right? But, you know, and if you say I'm not doing enough, that's bullshit. Because the more vocal I am, the less money I make, the less following I get because I'm, I'm getting throttled. I can't grow in anything. I'm risking by getting taken off. I mean, I'll be fine if I do, but you know, I, my channel, I, sh I should be like at 80,000 subs, but I'm not because I opened my mouth because I live based off of morals and principles. And honestly, I mean, at this point, Things are getting so bad that it doesn't matter if you have money. We're all going to suffer. All right, guys? So smash them likes. Till next time.